everyone. Welcome to today's session of Corrections. Uh, it is Thursday, uh, April 9th, and um, we start Chapter 6, Jail Book and Trial for Me uh, today. So, um, this chapter will cover um, a multitude of, of things that we need as an introduction to prison. Um, we'll talk about what jails are. Um, how they are administered, um, other um, uh, uses of jail pre-trial, not just post-conviction. We'll look at um, diversion programs that might keep people out of jail, uh, either on a pre-trial basis or, in a or to avoid a conviction altogether. We'll talk about pre-trial week, whether a person at his or her first court appearance it is its release on your own recognizance, with or without conditions and subject to supervision by a probation officer, or whether uh, the judge orders bail, and whether the bail comes with additional conditions, again, that would require supervision. Service 
palette, then the cube is just lift like that you know, prior to um, creating it. And there's no uh, court record um, of, uh, of any kind of it. Um, and that is probably important to uh, avoid uh, creating or uh, record of the cube. We can avoid it. Um, okay, when a person is arrested or sometimes um, less serious offenses receive a summons from the court, court order requiring them to appear in court on a day, uh, um, the first thing that happens is an arraignment from A R R A I G and Massachusetts, that first court appearance is called an arraignment. In um, other states, that first court appearance is called an initial appearance. At an arraignment, um, the, the prosecutor is there um, representing the Commonwealth, representing the Commonwealth. Um, and the judge, when he or she was called the case, when the clerk calls the case, they're going to go through a process. The charges will be read, um, the judge will determine if the defendant has um, an attorney with him or her. If not, um, if they can afford to hire counsel. If not, we'll have them evaluated um, by the probation department to determine if they qualify for court appointed counsel. Then, once they have an attorney or they waive their right to an attorney, uh, which um, defendants do. But then the defendant, once represented by counsel, or once has to sign a, a voluntary uh, waiver that the judge is confident in uh, knowingly and intelligently, uh, the next thing that happens is the defendant enters a plea. Typically, the defendant is not guilty unless they've already had a conversation uh, with the prosecutor or the police prosecutor. Uh, accept responsibility on um, this basis on payment of court costs of the $350. Um, and so that might happen. Uh, less serious um, uh, misdemeanors um, can get resolved right there um, at the time. Um, after the person typically enters the plea of not guilty, um, the next issue that is presented um, is whether or not the prosecutor on behalf of that the defendant not be released on his or her personal recognizance. Personal recognizance just means that the person uh, makes a verbal promise to the court on the record um, before they can make any tape recording or stenographic recording. Um, and from a defendant's point of view, the least on personal recognizance is always what uh, the defendant is. That means he or she Without having to post any bail, um, they promise that they will make the next court appearance whatever they that has to be. If um, a person is being released on personal recognizance, the prosecutor can ask for conditions of release, such as an example might be that the defendant be released on personal recognizance, subject to the condition that he or she have no contact with the victim. Or um, it might be subject to having mental health evaluations and reporting to a probation officer twice a week um, to, until the next court appearance. It could be a drug and alcohol uh, evaluation. There are a variety of conditions of release that can be imposed, even on release on personal recognizance. If the prosecutor requests a um, the that decision ultimately is made by the judge as to whether there are conditions or not. And the same is, we, is true with bail. Even if a person is held on bail and is able to post bail, the court can impose conditions which are requested um, by the prosecutor. Same thing. No contact with the victim, either the drug and alcohol evaluation, mental health evaluation, um, or something else. Uh, plus, contracts 
staying in contact with the probation officer, um, at least once a week, and all that, and that is uh, start to find to be compact with them. The prosecutor can also request that the interview be held without you know, and I'll talk about uh, what the standard is and what the arguments are after it's uh, going to that interview. So, I, I should well imagine what it comes to the community are um, public safety um, and whether the individual victim uh, whether or not the, uh, the person who's been arrested will in fact appear in court uh, or will take off. Um, from the assessment we received, he or she wants to not have to come up with the money because they would oftentimes just have it in life for bail. Um, they don't want to go to jail, which is what would happen if they were told or they were bail in some way that they uh, lack the means or that lack of the funds to go to jail. So there's a few different um, uh, interests that are being balanced here. Um, and it's ultimately the prosecutor's responsibility to make that argument um, either uh, for bail or uh, to have, have someone held without bail. Release on personal recognizance, we just as I said, a verbal promise, no financial obligation. Um, if a person who is released on their personal recognizance fails to show up in court, a, um, a bench warrant to warrant for their arrest to issue uh, and for default on a court appearance. Um, and I think that the, the, the defendant may be um, subject to conditions of release called conditional pre-trial release um, and supervised supervision by a probation officer um, to fulfill certain requirements as a list of the fair um, layoff plan that are being approved. Bail is it's requested to be with or without um, conditions and we're going to talk here for a minute and um, listen to or watch and listen to um, the power of in terms of bail. This agreement is the exception that I was carrying around. You think jail? That's where criminals are. That's like, no, that's where people who got busted. So why is that one of the reasons that we have the black male tennis practice we have of uh, making people uh, have an opportunity to take their money and see them make a decision as to whether or not they want to take that money is often made by the prosecutor. That decision happens in the flesh. Just like this. By the time it takes me to walk from the front of the courtroom to behind the courtroom and meet my client for the first time, the judge often accepts that.
next video that I had uh, queued up was um, starting my song. And, um, okay, um, so there were some misdeeds of the past um, in that prior video, uh, or could be interpreted as a misdeed of the past. The, um, the prosecutor does not decide if the decision is made or the judge. The prosecutor certainly um, has a responsibility um, within their duty to request bail if the circumstances warrant uh, the decision of whether a bail or not is uh, left to the judge. Um, and it is true that for individuals for whom um, bail is set and they cannot be bail, they are, um, it's a real question about uh, is that they are innocent or they may be proved innocent or so proven guilty and by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And yet, without the benefit of a trial, um, this person is um, sitting in jail in the car. So that question about is it fair, uh, does it turn, is it a fair process, uh, will come up uh, when it's Incentivize them to come back 
if they don't come back, if they work at the mail, that's the deal. If you continue to make reporting for it, you're going to get all your bill money back. At least in Massachusetts, even if it's hundred thousand dollars, it's a million dollars. You're going to get it back. Um, if it were to determine that the circumstances of the case are such that um, he or she needs to set bail, and an amount that is higher than the defendant can afford, then the judge had to make a written finding, um, in other words, maybe the judge would have to stop the thing and record on the record why is it this person needs to, what is it about this person or the circumstances of this criminal history? What, what is it that makes this um, necessary for the amount of bail to be posted to be more than the amount of money, or which essentially means you're going to have to wait after she was in jail um, until either someone posts that bail or until the case gets involved? Okay, um, you know, Reform law allows judges to use um, community correction centers, which we talked about in um, chapter five. So it could be the condition of this might be um, that a person <coughs> reports daily to the community correction center. Uh, or maybe twice a week, or whatever it happens to be. <coughs> uh, okay, and they are actually um, well, attempting, and I don't know whether this is implemented or not, uh, working on setting up a notification system of uh, the court, uh, affirmatively notifying the defendants of upcoming court dates, kind of like what Steve asked me to do, even though there's Video clip. Um, 
and uh, we're gonna we'll be back.
be on probation and go out and find out the schedule of information. Definitely work on them. Uh, like happens and couple of the club and when that does happen, um, those who are um, not infrequently returned um, to prison. Uh, I'm sorry, to, to jail. And um, so, okay, that's that. Um, Conditions of release on um, uh, are different. <clears throat> it's not for the real sorry. Uh,
dangerous to statute in Massachusetts um, can be um, applied if the person committed a felony offense um, that involves the use or attempted use or threatened use of physical force, um, a substantial risk of physical force, uh, or any crime of robbery or arson. It includes misdemeanor offenses, uh, violation of a restraining order. Uh, the use of containing a household member, it includes certain drug offenses, intimidation of witness, uh, third or subsequent uh, arrest for drug operating under the influence of uh, drugs or alcohol, and certain other, certain weapons offenses are eligible for prosecution if the request is immediately dangerous. Uh, risk needs assessments are often used um, depending upon what jurisdiction and what court you're in. Uh, they are used to determine uh, which defendant posed the greatest risk of recidivating um, and therefore um, whether or not bail is appropriate or conditions of release are necessary. Um, and those risk needs assessments can be enormously helpful. Um, the best we can to make sure everybody's doing uh, so we're not detaining people that don't need to be detained. Uh, okay, conditions um, uh, or factors in determining what what is the judge looking at? What uh, what are the factors the judge should be looking at when deciding um, to exercise his or her discretion to release somebody on their own recognizance, to require bail? To require conditions of release in either of those instances. And the answer to that is um, it's a little simpler here. The answer is um, this, this, the current charge, this health security charge. Are there any outstanding arrest warrants for the person at the time of their current physical life? Pending charges on, uh, at, at the time of the arrest. So uh, have open cases is already uh, involved. Uh, history of criminal convictions that this person has been convicted for a very because bail is to secure the person's appearance at the next court date. A very alien to the court date after it. How many times has this person defaulted in absence, has not shown up in court on a scheduled court date? The more default for the person now on their um, under um, court information record, the uh, easier it is for the prosecution to make the argument. The bill is designed to ensure the defendant's return. This defendant has defaulted at least once in every single criminal case that he has had, and he's had 24 years. History of violence. Um, uh, residential stability contact um, is a community employment stability, um, history of substance abuse, drug or alcohol. Those are all uh, risk factors um, that that uh, will have to go into the decision of do we need bail and or conditions or both um, in order uh, for this person to come back uh, when the duty is there. Okay, so I already mentioned financial ability to pay, um, but we take it into consideration the bail decision. And uh, this is um, from, it looks complicated, but it's really not. So the person's arrested, um, and one or two things are going to happen. Uh, at the court arraignment, either the person's going to be held or they're going to be released. Um, if they're held, they're going to be held in jail. Jails are the part of the building of the housing corrections where uh, people who have not been convicted are detained. So someone who can't make bail goes to where else? For the county housing corrections. But they are not in the general population with convicted offenders. They are in a separate part of that facility um, for individuals who are uh, either held without bail. Or held on a detail, held on a container, or um, whatever reason they happen to be um, on pretrial um, detention. If um, the judge decides we're going to release them, 
then the, the question is, um, am I going to release without a financial obligation? No bail. No bail. Release on personal recovery. But that can still happen with the conditions. I will release you on your personal recovery, but there are conditions that you have to comply with. If you violate those conditions, I can revoke your release and I can either impose bail or I can request it. If the judge, um, based upon arguments,
any given day. That's a lot of people. Um, Jill also circled over her. So this person were 11 million admissions. Someone could be admitted to jail because they couldn't pay bail before. So they were transported to the jail, and two hours after they were admitted to the jail, someone came to the jail and bailed them out. Um, so there's people coming in and out all the time um, by virtue of the fact that to go to court and getting the case was wrapped up and um, there's always more people coming in with that. Okay. Uh, so, this is a nationwide thing. And of jail, or what we call it, in Massachusetts, we have jails and houses of correction. They have typically one building that um, has one part is called the jail, which houses um, pre-trial detainees. A part of that building where people who've been convicted are serving their sentence to help correction In 2019, of the 600 staff that in 2018, uh, which was prepared in 2018, um, of the 600,000 people who are in jail for health and correction across the United States, um, what you can see is um, less than in four were there because they had been convicted of crime. Three out of four, more than three out of four, um, were pre trial detainees. They were held without bail. Immigration, parole, detainment. Um, so that that reinforces um, the information we gave, which said you know, the majority, um, the majority of the national level, a super majority of um, inmates um, were uh, pre hard not. Okay. Um, so we have financial costs, student billing. Um, these are changes on how to correct the community. So, uh, for, uh, as a period ending uh, June 30th, 2019. And you can see that, uh, Berkshire County spent on average for a jail inmate, uh, the Berkshire for jail inmate, close to $100,000. Uh, as the Barnstable Middle Center is right up here, uh, the next year down is Franklin. Thank you. 
um, able to, or there was a design to, to provide um, accommodations for another theater or, um, or other services. So people who are in lockup generally do for 24 hours or less. That would be for some other things. Um, but here, uh, every home is not going to be a part of the
um, 